Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. I'd like to welcome every member of the congregation on this fifth Sunday of Easter when we celebrate Jesus' resurrection. And with being able to return to our own church building, I'd like to celebrate our coming home to our church and new life for us. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Almighty God, our Amen. Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, have overcome death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that, as by your grace going before us, you put into our minds good desires, so by your continual help we may bring them to good effect. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And our special collect for this period of time when the world is afflicted by the COVID-19 virus, let us pray. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy, in this time of uncertainty and distress. Sustain and support the anxious and fearful, and lift up all who are brought low, that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now Shirley will read for us our first reading. A reading from the book of Acts. Standing before the high priest and the council, Stephen, filled with the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God 
and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm going to say today's psalm, which is Psalm 31, and you'll find the words of our service and indeed the psalm on our parish website, which is www.sjoj.co.uk. And if you'd like to join in, Incline your ear to me, make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. For you are my crag and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that they have secretly set for me. For you are my tower of strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant, and in your loving kindness save me. Now Jill's going to read for us our gospel reading. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. And from now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, 
and believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. There are often too many possible themes to honour properly on any given Sunday, so you have to make choices. There are a number of things I won't be talking about today, but they are really important. Firstly, today is the start of Christian Aid Week. The best way to engage with that and to give under these conditions is via their website, christianaid.org.uk. And there's even a pre-recorded quiz with former Archbishop Rowan Williams, if you're missing the one that we should have been having in the parish. We would also have been marking Dying Matters Awareness Week from the 11th to the 17th of May. Again, their website, dyingmatters.org, is a good place to start. Their strapline is Dying Matters Let's talk about it. Never perhaps more important than in this context. By God's grace, may I speak in his name, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. John chapter 14, verse one. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. I want to tell you about an exchange with a very dear friend of mine which took place during this last fortnight. It has two aspects to it. In part, it's about something he ended up doing himself, which I also ended up finding very helpful. And in part, it's about some good advice which he gave to me. My friend had found in his attic letters which were written by family members who have since died. In them were accounts of periods of history, the Second World War in particular, which his relatives had lived through and he was very struck by the courage of his forebears, courage discovered in the face of terrible and widespread suffering. And he'd found that comforting in our current context, in a moment in time when life is challenging for us all now in London and is challenging for people all around the world. And of course, one wouldn't want to minimize in any way the suffering that is so clear and painful around us by somehow suggesting that it's all right because worse things have happened before. That would be a terrible thing to do. We've heard of lives cut short well before their time, of terrible grief and sometimes inhuman goodbyes. What inspired my friend was that somehow his relatives had survived it, had witnessed it, and yet had gone on living. Somehow they had managed to dig deep and to endure. My friend had found comfort in going back in time and I decided to be on the lookout for opportunities to do the same. Two clear opportunities presented themselves this week. 
The first was Friday's commemoration of VE Victory in Europe Day, the day towards the end of World War II when fighting against Nazi Germany in Europe came to an end. By 1945, around the world, an estimated 15 million people had died in battle and 45 million civilians had died globally. Amongst those figures was the genocide of some 6 million Jews. I discovered the person who inspired me most reading things on Friday on a page of the BBC News website. The person's name was Mrs. MacDonald and she was living in Glasgow in 1945. She was interviewed as the war in Europe ended and explained that her youngest son was seven, but she had four other boys who'd all enlisted. And these are her words. And it's one of them, Roy, that I'm thinking of especially. He was in his second year learning to be a doctor at the Glasgow University in 1939. He volunteered for the Black Watch and then got a commission in the Highland Light Infantry. Roy was killed in Italy, Mrs. MacDonald explains, and she goes on, and another of my sons had been discharged from the Scots Guards with the loss of one of his legs. I can't forget that the war is only half done. I have another son in the Air Force in Southeast Asia. And my second youngest has just gone into the fleet air arm. On this day of victory, I pray that soon the war in the East will be over too so that with your sons, they will return home before long. Until then, God keep them wherever they may be. And there the interview ends. The tapes of the interview have survived. You can hear Mrs. MacDonald's voice. It is very dignified and courageous and remarkable. My second inspiring person would be Florence Nightingale, whose 200th birthday falls on Tuesday. There's a Florence Nightingale window in our church. High up to the right of the high altar, hard to see from the pews, you have to come up right up into the chancel, the area beyond the altar we use to see it properly. British social reformer and statistician and the founder of modern nursing. An impressive CV. Earlier in the year, we were thinking about how to mark her 200th birthday mark her extraordinary work in the Crimean War. Poignant to think that her anniversary is marked with her name being chosen for the small number of enormous field hospitals around the country built to exclusively treat COVID-19 patients. Some of them, the one in East London now closing Every aspect of Florence Nightingale's life is inspiring. There are completely unique, in my view, aspects of what's going on now. But it is good to remember that human beings have been through terrible things before with hugely greater casualties and they have survived and managed to successfully rebuild their lives. 
And how about the good advice that my friend gave to me? He'd asked me how I was, and I did my best to give an honest account. And part of that was to say that there was a great deal to think about, and slightly too much to care about. His reply was that I should cast my cares on the great carer, capital G, capital C, who also cares infinitely for me. It was such a great piece of advice. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. And I needed to remind myself that on Easter morning, I was thinking about another window in our church. The tall and thin east window, which shows Christ the healer. And in the narrow lancet windows, to the right and left of it, sick people are being brought to Christ the healer. And I began to feel that to run myself into the ground through an excess of work was not only inadvisable for all sorts of reasons, but it might also betray a lack of trust in the great carer, Christ the healer. We can try to walk in his footsteps, to live out in our lives God's love for all that he has made. But ultimately, our efforts, our love, needs to be put in context of God's infinite love and work that passes our understanding. It's important not to overstate this. There have been some truly remarkable practical responses. There are some truly remarkable members of our own congregation doing extraordinary things. Long may that both continue and increase all around us. But spiritually, it seems very important to me to know where your heart is fixed, in this case on God, and then to do one's work with God as one's sure foundation, trusting in God's love for God's creation, not in one's own energy levels. The single most concise and perceptive piece of commentary on what's going on at the moment, in my mind, has come from a non-Anglican, from Pope Francis. His comment was, we carried on regardless, thinking we could stay healthy in a world that was sick. Part of that sickness, in my view, is environmental. Part of it is about all sorts of aspects of social inequality. I feel we need to be very careful indeed about wanting to go back to the way things were. It seems to me, and many people I've been talking to with our, within our congregation, that we could do a great deal better. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. Amen. Now we're going to say together our creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. Suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins. The resurrection of the body and the life of us.
Lord, we thank you for your love for us. We thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for his resurrection. And we thank you for this Easter season. Pray that you will breathe new life into us. Into our church community. Into the wider church. And in the wider world. especially for this congregation at St. John of Jerusalem, for your blessing upon us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, we pray for all those involved with prayers for healing in our church, that you may strengthen them in their prayers. We thank you for them. We pray too for our director of music and for all our musicians and for those who love music. We thank you for the gift of music itself. We pray for our children and young people and for every member of the congregation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray 
to, especially for Tristan and Jenny and Graham. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, we pray for Jill and Christian and for the chaplaincy work at Harlow Hospital. who live at Leander Court, and for your blessing also upon the staff who work there. We pray for our local doctors and pharmacies. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, we pray for those involved in the mutual aid work in our parish. We thank you for the volunteers. church school, for Azarina and Rene and for all the staff and every child in our school, and for all our local children and young people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those who have died recently, and amongst them we pray for Sophie Fagan, Stephen Coley, Roger Blackstone. Spirit may sustain us and comfort us and strengthen us and bring us hope. And with John the Baptist and all your saints, we say together, merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour. risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the risen Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
present Lord Jesus Christ, our risen High Priest, make yourself known in the breaking of bread. Amen. Amen. The Lord is here. The Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, almighty and eternal Father. And in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. Who by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell, and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, 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 This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption, as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of John the Baptist and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Thank you. 
trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all are shared. desire to receive the Eucharist, your desire to be present even in the church on this particular Sunday, that desire to participate in the Eucharist is itself um, blessed by God and it is possible to be in spiritual communion with one another and with God even when it's not possible to attend in person and to receive like to say a prayer with you which has the intention of kindling in your heart um, the desire to receive and that desire itself is blessed by God. So if you'd like to repeat after me these lines of this prayer. Thanks be to you Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to you Lord Jesus Christ. For all the benefits that you have given me all the benefits you have given me for all the pains and insults you have borne for me for all the pains and insults you have borne for me since i cannot now receive you sacramentally since i cannot now receive you sacramentally i ask you to come spiritually into my heart i ask you to come spiritually into my heart O oh, most merciful redeemer friend and brother O oh, most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may I know you more clearly. May I know you more clearly. Love you more dearly. Love you more dearly. And follow you more nearly day by day. And follow you more nearly day by day. Amen. Amen. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are poor to his suffering. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
Son, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life. Grant us to walk in his way, to rejoice in his truth, and to share his risen life, who is alive and reigns, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Just a few notices. First of all, to greet um, every member of the congregation and anyone who's joining us for worship today. We've gone into the practice of having a get-together at 11 a.m. risen indeed. Alleluia. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has given us new life and hope. He has raised Jesus from the dead. God has claimed us as his own. He has brought us out of darkness. He has made us light to the world. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant. Make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, and the blessing of 